the doctors may be imprisoned they may be put behind the bars so the negligence is also of two kinds now the question comes negligence is negligence what makes the distinction that this is a civil negligence and this is a criminal negligence I've told you about the consequences but the distinction is the civil negligence is where you have committed some folly or you are not careful enough while treating and there is a slip in your treatment because negligence is defined by Supreme Court in several matters if there is a slip or maybe some kind of carelessly you have done some wrong and the patient is suffering then the courts would normally put you under the civil negligence but in case a doctor proactively did something so wrong which shakes the conscience of the court that you deliberately with the knowledge that this is absolutely wrong for example there's a leading case I'll tell you Juggan Khan versus state of Madhya Pradesh now Juggan Khan claimed to be a homeopathic doctor and a newly married lady of 20 years having some stomach ache approached the doctor through in-laws and relatives and it was while diagnosing it was found that due to some stomach worms she's having this stomach ache so these stomach worms were to be treated now I am telling you this leading case may not be understanding your medical terms but some kind of mother tincture 24 drops were given by Juggan Khan the so called Dr. Juggan Khan along with a dhatura leaf now the moment 24 drops of that mother tincture along with one dhatura leaf was given to the patient she had approached the doctor somewhere around 8 in the morning and by 5 in the evening she died and she died in the clinic itself because within an hour she started feeling restless she started complaining about the restlessness and the doctor kept on trying this or that treatment ultimately by 5 in the evening she died now during the autopsy it was found out in the post-mortem that this combination was given And several experts were called in the witness box to depose whether for stomach worms this is the right combination of treatment and most of them held that this is a lethal combination of a poisonous nature and for your information there is a very important medical jurisprudence book written by Mr. Modi which is called an authority on medical jurisprudence that book was also referred and that book also stated that four worms that mother tincture 
is the right treatment but the doses of 24 drops along with dhatura leaf is poisonous. The doctor was charged with murder. He was immediately taken into custody, arrested. After the trial, the trial court held him to be guilty of murder and was allotted life imprisonment, notwithstanding his license cancelled and all. The matter went up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court finally, finding that this case, this is a clear case of a criminal negligence, but found that the motive was not there to kill. The, though the patient got killed because of his criminal negligence of giving this low, lethal combination of a poisonous nature, so he has done something criminal negligence because he is not expert of that faculty in which he is doing on his own, but diluted the charge from 302 to 34A, 304A of a criminal negligence. From life imprisonment that punishment was reduced to the imprisonment for two years. But this is a case of criminal negligence where without knowledge if proactively in the zeal to treat and in the zeal to prove that you are the best, the most competent doctor, if you do something which is beyond your brief you may end up into the courts or maybe in the jail. But for a happy moment for the doctors, the courts in India have hardly, hardly decided matters against doctors in the nature of criminal negligence. Most of the matters which you find and if you research are categorized in civil negligence category because primarily the courts find that no doctor would treat to kill. The motive will never be to kill. <coughs> you may have certain negligence of some kind like for example, in Samida Kohli's case of Delhi, she was admitted to be operated for some disease in her stomach and while undergoing operations, the doctors found that she has some infection in the other part of the body as well. So the doctor sent the word outside seeking the consent of the husband that this has been divulged while conducting an operation, a surgery and also sent his opinion that once we have opened the body and the surgery is going on, it is intelligent to treat that aspect as well. And the husband naturally gave consent. Now, later on, it was found out that something called ovaries or uh, I may be slipping something medical term was removed. The consequence was that she could never be bearing the child in future. Now when she came into senses and found out that this is what has transpired, she sued the doctor. And this is a case which is a landmark judgment on consent. 
And when the hospital and the doctor said that we did take consent of the husband, who is the natural guardian of the wife, it was pointed out that though the consent was there, admittedly, but it was not an informed consent. Now, so please understand the distinction between a consent and an informed consent. A consent and informed consent has difference. Here, a consent was taken from the husband that there is additional infection in another part of the body which needs treatment and which needs healing. Otherwise, soon there will be another surgery. The patient will have to go undergo another surgery. Naturally, the consent was given. But it was not an informed consent by the husband because he was not aware that a body part will be removed. This is a case of civil negligence, not a criminal negligence. Because it was found out the doctor did something for the betterment of the patient. But there was a negligence in obtaining an informed consent. And therefore, the hospital was put under the burden to pay the damages to the patient and to compensate him in monetary terms. So I've given you the example of civil negligence and criminal negligence. And in the guise, I've also informed you about how to obtain an informed consent. So while treating a patient, you may have to administer some such medicine which you want to inform to your patient that see this medicine may have this line of action and treatment but you may feel little sleepy or drowsy you may feel little giddy whatever before administering a medicine if you inform and take consent, do you want to have it or should I change to some other medicine? And if you take that consent, that is informed consent. And while I'm telling you, in case if your institution would desire, I shall provide you a ready-made format of an informed consent which you must get it signed before treating any patient along with taking the detailed history. So that tomorrow when you go into the practice, you may have that informed consent format ready. Now please understand, there are so many such situations occur, not only as a practitioner, but also, if you are part of some larger hospital, there are so many cases which find fault not only in an institution but all those people who are part of that institution because they are considered responsible for it. So, in case tomorrow you join some larger hospital and you find that something objectionable is going on, please put your objection in writing so that tomorrow if any untoward incident happens, you would personally not be liable. Even if somebody sues that institution or the hospital, Personally, you would not be under response because you have objected to that. You've pointed out because there are cases of such nature also where the person said that it is not my doing. The hospital has so many doctors and this patient was not treated by me and this other doctor had treated, though I know that this was going on. 
But the courts have penalized such people also who have kept mum, despite the knowledge of any malpractice.